Good morning and welcome to the Detroit Regional Chamber's continuing Black and diverse owned business series. I'm Tammy Kernreich. I'm the Chief Operating Officer here at the Chamber. Today, the Chamber and Michigan Economic Development Corporation's Pure Michigan Business Connect will discuss growth resources that diverse owned businesses can access, share opportunities, and provide insights on procurement cycles. Um, today's program will feature several presentations from speakers, and then we'll have plenty of time at the end for you to give your audience questions. I'll remind you there is a chat box. It's on the right side of your screen, um, and you just scroll down. There's a box, should be a box. Scroll down to the um, questions area, and um, you can submit it then. I do need to let you know that, you know, sometimes we can't get to all the questions, and if we don't, um, we do try to always follow up, get answers to the questions, and then we post them um, on our website. Um, and uh, following our presentation and the Q&A, you're going to learn more about um, upcoming procurement programs with Pure Michigan Business Connect, uh, as I mentioned, which is a program of the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. My colleague, Devin O'Reilly, who's our Director of Entrepreneurship, Detroit Engagement, and Mobility Initiatives at the Chamber. He'll be joining me, he'll be monitoring your questions, and when the time comes, he'll be posing those to the speakers uh, for their response to you. Um, I wanna be sure to thank Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan uh, for their support of our Black and Diverse Owned Business Series. We never could be presenting these programs without their support. So one last thing, um, I want to encourage you, if you'd like to learn more, um, I want you to visit DetroitChamber.com backslash equity, and there you'll find all the resources we've gathered, all of our previous programs that we've put on that have been taped, um, and also visit DetroitMeansBusiness.org because they also have more resources available for you to take advantage of. So let me intro the panel. Um, today I have the privilege of speaking with a fantastic panel to discuss procurement opportunities for uh, small diverse owned businesses. And first up, I would talk about Tommy Marks. And Tommy's the director for the Department of Commerce's Virginia Minority Business Development Agency Business Center and a retired mem member of the Army's Senior Executive Service and former director of the Army Small Business Programs Office for the Secretary of the Army. Uh, also on the panel will be Marie Kapinski. Marie is the Assistant Director, Office of Small Business Programs, U.S. Army Tank Command, Automotive Command, otherwise known by most of us as TACOM, located out in Warren. And then our additional panelists will be um, Melinda Westbrook, who serves as the Deputy Director of Supplier Diversity at Wayne County Airport Authority. The airport authority includes our not only our Detroit Metropolitan Airport, um, but also um, Willow Run Airport, both located in Detroit. And Melinda serves as the Airport Concessions Disadvantaged Business Enterprise Liaison Officer. So I think we've got some real good folks for you to hear from today. And so now at this point, I'd like to start our presentation and turn it over to Tommy Marks to share his experience uh, on how small and minority owned firms can not only access procurement successfully, uh, but find the resources and get the help you need to be successful at it. So Tommy, it's all yours. Good morning, Tammy. And thanks very much. And uh, thanks for inviting me to Detroit on a, on a cold and uh, bless, blistery day. Uh, Coming from Alexander, Virginia, in the warmth of my office, uh, I am pleased to be here, but outside the window, we're trying to get a little snow on the ground. You know, we don't get much here, but when it does, it stops everything. So folks are two hours delay to come to work, so they're sleeping in. Uh, so again, thank you. Uh, again, uh, I, Tommy Marks, I'm uh, the director of the uh, Virginia Minority Business Development Agency's Business Center. Uh, I wanna share a little bit with you today about the. Uh, the Minority Business Development Agency, which is uh, a bureau of the Department of Commerce, uh, which is designed, which was set up 
uh, 52 years ago uh, by an executive order from President Nixon in order to assist uh, minority businesses in five ethnic categories, uh, African-American, Asian-American, uh, which includes Asian Indians and our Pacific Islanders, um, Hispanic Americans, Native Americans, which include our Alaska Native corporations, um, and um, Hasidic Jews. Uh, those, those groups uh, are the focus of the Department of Commerce is what we call MBDA. And so MBDA's uh, mission for 52 years was based on executive orders. And we were, uh, I say we were blessed in November, President Biden signed into law the MBDA Act, which puts uh, some teeth, more teeth into uh, the responsibilities at the federal agencies to uh, include minority businesses in their spend. Uh, and if you tracked uh, when President Biden took over last January, he made it uh, a year um, today. Um, he, the, from one of the first executive orders, he talked about increasing minority spend in the federal government. Uh, and that is uh, now in law. And so you'll see the SBA doing things uh, to uh, ensure that that happens. Uh, and, and typically that's tracked under the small disadvantaged business category. Um, the um, current increase is up to 15 percent uh, by 2025. And agencies are already, uh, you know, doing their work in order to uh, make sure those things happen. So the MBA, uh, again, it leads the federal government's effort to promote growth and global com competitiveness, competitiveness, excuse me, of what we call MBEs, minority business enterprises. Uh, some key priorities that we have or designed to, to overcome the challenges that our businesses uh, uh, face is uh, working with business development, capacity building, uh, and the business development is, you know, helping foster and securing new opportunities for MBEs that result in revenue generation, uh, assisting our clients to increase sales uh, and service agreements, you know, product requests, task orders and exports. Um, the, uh, the, the network that we have that does this consists of 45 uh, business centers across the United States. Uh, you can go to mbda.gov and there's a map. Uh, uh, as I said in Alexandria, uh, right there in Detroit, uh, my colleague, Bill Grice, uh, who I think who is on uh, and listening, uh, Bill runs um, the Detroit Minority Business Development Agency's office located there in Detroit. Uh, and uh, uh, his phone number is uh, 517-231-5278. And I'll make sure I put that in the chat. He and I talk. Uh, he knows I'm, I'm in his backyard today. Uh, but we, Bill and I worked together for the last 18 months as we try to uh, collaborate across uh, between centers in helping minority businesses uh, uh, grow their business. The, the other key things that we do, matchmaking opportunities. You'll find the centers throughout the year uh, put on a number of things uh, that uh, that are focused on helping your business grow, uh, to uh, seek opportunities, uh, secure those opportunities, and, uh, and, and also to help ensure that you are procurement ready in order when those opportunities come along. Um, so matchmaking is a key function and so is outreach. The uh, capacity building, uh, you know, that occurs when MBEs are, you know, are assisted with management capacity, financial capacity, technology capacity. We know that some of the barriers uh, exist in those areas and especially access to capital. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but the business centers will assist you to improve your operational efficiencies, increase resources, uh, build a scale, manage risk and increase liability, of th liability thresholds. Also to strengthen your management teams, access and secure financing, equity and venture capital. Um, the uh, also increase your profits and owner equity and implement and integrate new technology. Uh, that's that's what our mission is as we across the board. Uh, and, and as I stated, we have 45 of these business centers across the United States. Uh, the specialty centers or if you're a business and you're interested in exporting, we have four export centers. Uh, one's located in Houston, Texas. Uh, one's located uh, which focuses uh, toward the, uh, on the European continent. Um, 
the um, in Miami, uh, that center focuses on the Caribbean. If you're an exporter and you're interested in the Caribbean, um, in uh, San Antonio, uh, they focus. They have a focus of uh, Central and South America, and then in um, Phoenix, Arizona, uh, which is one our newest center, uh, focuses on the Far East. And so, if, if you're in that, uh, your company falls in those areas. If you are in the in manufacturing, uh, right there in Detroit, there's an advanced manufacturing uh, uh, center. Uh, I believe, if I didn't forget my notes, located in Detroit, there's one in in Atlanta, uh, run by Georgia Tech. If you're into uh, information technology and cyber, um, San Antonio has one that looks at general manufacturing, and then Baltimore has an advanced manufacturing center uh, that focuses on general industrial manufacturing. The, and then the, the final specialty center is called the Federal Procurement Center. It's located in Washington, D.C. And, and if, if uh, your company, your focus is the federal government, um, the, the Washington, D.C. Center focuses on that. But the 36 business centers uh, like I run and like uh, Bill manages and directs focus on local, state and federal government uh, opportunities. The, um, you know, uh, a big thing that we pride ourselves on is, is managing relationships and uh, sources of the deals by promoting your interests, uh, along with, uh, you know, the federal agencies and also with corporate America. Um, in the state of Michigan, the Michigan Minority uh, Supply Development Council, which actually operates the center that Bill runs, uh, is, is a big entity focused on minority businesses and together, you know, we team and I actually belong to the Capital Region Minority Supply Development Council here in the, uh, the, the national capital region. And so we work to hand in hand with our council presidents in order to uh, to uh, bring uh, to bear what we believe can help uh, our businesses prosper. The. Um, uh, you know, the, the key to success uh, and, the, you know, the next presenter, um, Marie Kopinski and I worked together before I retired from the military, from uh, excuse, not, the, not the military, but from uh, uh, the secretary's uh, job. The, uh, our, our focus was to really ensure that our, our small businesses got a seat at the table uh, in order to help with uh, mission responsibilities for agencies. And, and the key to that, though, what I would tell small businesses every day of the week is that you've got to be ready when you come to the table uh, so that when those opportunities present themselves, that you can, uh, you know, you, you know that you can do them and, and, you, and you can prove that. Uh, but uh, we're, we're all here to support and, and help with that, uh, that journey. The um, uh, one of the key things that is taking place you know, or one of the barriers, access to capital with all our small businesses. Uh, there's a lot of money that has been approved by Congress uh, that the president has supported, uh, that uh, the uh, part of our job is to ensure that uh, you have awareness of that. And, and if you need uh, working with the right agencies and the right folks in order to, to get some of that capital. Uh, the latest one, uh, which actually was started under President Obama called the State Small Business Initiative, credit initiative where every state is given a, a, a portion of some federal dollars in order to provide capital to their small businesses. Uh, President Biden in November signed into law the uh, extension of that, that program uh, now called uh, State Small Business Credit Initiative 2.0. It is now from, went from 1.5 billion to $10 billion. And uh, the example is uh, the state of Michigan uh, we'll get about $237 million of that money in order to provide loans and or grants uh, in various um, programs to their small businesses that are in the state of Michigan, and which, which clearly uh, we can use to help uh, when you're trying to do your work in order to secure uh, more business. So when you're talking about access to capital, uh, that's one uh, to, to consider. and. Uh, and Bill can share more about what's happening in the state of Michigan, and uh, but that is that is on the horizon um, as one of the um, the areas to to help our businesses, which we know um, 
access to capital is a major barrier. The uh, ultimately, the um, we come to work each day in order to assist you. And uh, if you're interested in the, the Minority Business Development Agency, um, Detroit um, Mission, please contact Bill Grice. Uh, again, I'll ensure I put his phone number, Tammy, in the uh, in the chat. And um, uh, he's definitely uh, willing and, and, and able and ready to, uh, to help. Thank you very much, Tammy. Uh, thank you very much, Tommy. Uh, we really appreciate your presentation. I appreciate you pointing out Bill Grice. It will also make sure to feature that on our website so folks can know how to reach out to, to Bill in, in Detroit proper. And um, I thank you for laying out the foundation for our, our conversation. I invite you to stay on with us. Feel free to add to the panel conversation. Uh, for you folks out there um, who might not know, I, I, ho I hold a second hat, and that second hat is I'm civilian aid to Secretary of the Army for Michigan. So having my Army colleagues um, as a part of some of our programming, I'm, I'm very proud of, and um, I thank you for all your service, Tommy. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so I think now we're ready to bring in our panel. See Marie. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, is Melinda with us? All right, well then let's do this until we can get Melinda in. There she is. Hello, Melinda. Hello, Tammy. It's a pleasure to have you, Marie and Melinda. We've had some great discussions. Um, as we had talked about, you know, there's probably three key areas that we want to focus on this morning. Um, the first one is, you know, talking about how your organization is positioned and your strategy around doing business with small minority owned firms. Uh, to to talk about what you have available for procurement opportunities. You know, what do small businesses uh, need to know that is out there for them um, under your programs? Um, and then finally, what is your process for businesses to apply and, and be considered, whether it's RFP or it's getting, you know, first approved as a vendor, whatever it may be. Those are the kind of things that, you know, we really do want to um, cover today. So let me first start with uh, you, Melinda. Um, and the Wayne County Airport Authority, I've, I've been out there a couple of times and you've got some amazing new things that are gonna be happening out there to expand our airport. Um, why don't you first talk about what's underway at the airport at the Detroit Metropolitan Airport, but then how are you positioned to do business with small minority owned firms? Well, uh, thank you. What you may not know is that the airport has uh, quite a bit of funding right now for improvements out of the airport. And we're looking for small disadvantaged businesses to really participate in our, uh, in our process. And part of what they need to do to get themselves positioned is to hopefully, if they think they're eligible, uh, they can participate as part of our small business enterprise program, or they can be certified as a disadvantaged business uh, with Michigan. And uh, what we're looking for is companies who are interested in doing business, who are interested in learning what they need to do to work at the airport. And I think Tony had a really uh, great point. He said, uh, when you come to the table, you have to be prepared. So we want to be able to give them what they need to be prepared to work at the airport and to gain contracts. Oh, that sounds great. I'm gonna come back to you in a couple of minutes after I talk to Marie so that we can hear more about the procurement opportunities that are available out there. And I know you have a lot. So Marie, yes. let's talk uh, also um, first, just because I spend a lot of time doing this, talking about take-home, there's a lot of 
So why don't you first just talk about the U.S. and our military um, but then talk about, you know, how you're positioned to do business with small and minority owned firms. Yes, one of the things I want to mention is that I sent some uh, handouts earlier that you're going to make available to your attendees, which takes us going through business, uh, what do you need to do, how do you need to do it, as well as so folks know we're just not in Warren, Michigan. We have locations across the country, and that's our depots and arsenal. So if you have some other capabilities, what I would suggest is I think you guys will have my email posted. I would like you to send me your capability statements as well as an introduction to your company and a little short, uh, one of the things you need to know is we do look at past performance. So I don't care if it's commercial, if it's with one of the larger automotive companies or you've been a tier two or you're just getting started, we need to know that because we have different levels available of types of work that you probably can engage with. Um, one of the things that I want to let people know is, hey, if it's got wheels or track, if it's petroleum water-based, if it's on a soldier, if he shoots it, uses it, or sits on it, take is responsible for that procurement. And then the repair of it as well. So you look at Sierra Army Depot, you look at Anniston, Alabama, you look at Red River, Texas, Texarkana, as well as the cannons and gun tubes and everything up at Water Belize. So, so we're, we're just about everywhere and anybody we support is around the world. So whether you're into some IT or you're in, right now we're looking, uh, I really need people that manufacture. Okay. And, and if you're scared of doing business with us and you don't want to be a prime right off the bat, there's a lot of subcontracting opportunities. So what's going to happen when you send us our, your capability statement? I have the best job in the world. I get to tell you where to go, but you'll leave with a smile on your face. Okay. We're going to look at, at who you are, who you are, what you do and, and, and where you need to go. And, and the other thing I have a team, there's, there's five of us here in, in the Detroit area. And then we have, other groups around the country at those depots and arsenal. So, so our mission is, is to uh, go to the table early. I always tell our product executives, I got the chair, you just tell me where, okay? Because we want to meet them ahead of time when they're just looking at that funding that's been approved and where our, our minority businesses, our woman-owned businesses, disadvantaged businesses, where we can find a fit. OK, and, and that's really important because we do market research, not only at our level, but also at the contracting level, also at the PEO level, because it's not just about goals. I want to find you and the good things you do and the important inventions and things that you have available to us. So it, it's going to be important for you to get me your capability statements. It's going to be important for you to engage with your local procurement technical assistance centers, your chambers, your Pure Michigan group, especially Mr. Marx's group that, that's here. Uh, several years ago, um, we had one uh, of their events at, uh, I believe it was called Kobo at the time, but it was our large convention center and arena. And, and there was like over 300 different federal, state, local businesses that were there for you. So you have to make sure you see where they have their national event. Um, you know, uh, we're, we're tied into so many different things. And, and my thing is, if your capability statement doesn't fit with what I do, well, our team finds where, where you need to go. So, so maybe you need to go with our, our different IT groups or, or if you're into training, you know, we, we have, uh, the Army is vast, okay, so if it's not me, we'll find where you need to be, okay. Um, I'm not sure, well, I got to ask, hey, I'm going to do a commercial here real quick. Once a month, you guys need to go look at the Federal Register, okay, because the SBA or legislation or something that can slam what you do is going to be published, and if you don't bother to read it, you can't change legislation. And I'll give the example of my woman-owned businesses. They weren't watching, and $42 million a year went to Ability One. Okay? Snatched that right out from under us, and there it went, never to come back. 
So it's important for you to engage and look at the Federal Register because if the SBA changes size standards, if they do things that impact you, that is your only opportunity in within a 30 to 45 day period to say, oh no, that's going to negatively impact my minority owned business. You know, you're putting me in a category with folks that I really shouldn't shouldn't fare to compete with because maybe they make 32 million a year and in that service category, well, they're considered small. And maybe you're only making a couple million. That's not fair. But if you don't comment, things get changed and, and you'll be in trouble. So if you would do that for me, I would be a happy camper because that's one of the things I can't help you with. You as the general public have to do that. So Marie, that you mentioned the slides that you did provide us and we're gonna post them on our website when this is over. Um, does that give the information on how to access the Federal Register? Oh, uh, uh, not the Federal Register. That one we just Google and go right to it, but it does have your SAM.gov. Everything we do okay. has to be published. And what's really important, not only that the charts show all the types of materials and things we buy, but what's important is that for opportunities, you need to go onto SAM.gov, you need to go into the notices section, because well before a solicitation is posted, my synopsis is there. If the PEO is having an industry day because they can't find companies that they need, that's published there. Most of them have been virtual during the pandemic, but historically we've gone out to the Selfridge Air National Guard or we've gone to, uh, you know, right at TACOM. So, so that's important because Request for information. We've got scientists that can't figure something out. It's posted there. The synopsis is posted there well before the solicitation is let. So you have an idea of who you may want to partner with. You know, maybe you do something special, but somebody else has some other capabilities and you want to do a joint venture or anything. All that stuff gets posted there. And, and one of the most important things is like we have the Michigan Defense Exposition that's coming up, MDEX. That's gonna be published there, okay? Not only on NDIA and all these other organizations that you may belong to that you can see it, but it's also in there. And the other thing that I gave folks is, you know, people say, I'm not gonna look through a thousand things, blah, blah, blah. Okay, guess what? You got a cage code when you do business with me. You've gone to the Small Business Administration, you've registered your company, and here comes the important thing. I have a DODAC, that's my cage code. So if you wanna see TACOM, you just put in your know, filter for W568ZV, guess what? You're only gonna pull up take on type requirements. If you got a division that wants to do something with the cannons over there in, in the Waterville area, you know, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, you know, uh, New York, well then you would type in their code and then just their stuff would populate. So, so you know, um, I always tell contractors, you pay your taxes, I'm free. Come to us, we're gonna tell you the things you need to know, we're gonna tell you where to go, and you're going to be extremely happy because you're going to do you're going to be able to do business the right way and not feel defeated. So if you're new and you're not registered, I suggest you go to uh, sam.gov. It's going to take you through everything. And the other important thing is um, the government uh, has categories of thresholds of dollar values. So if we have things that are considered simplified, uh, the contracting officers and contract specialists. They do their own market research. Well, they go to SAM.gov, and if you did not put in some keywords besides all those codes, the NAICS codes that say what kind of business you are, they're looking for somebody that might do springs, okay, for trucks, all right? If they go and they do that, and it's a job that doesn't come through my office that we check that it's, it's over a threshold, they may be not picking the right set of companies. And especially when you bring in your capability statements, we share, especially with the disadvantaged business, the woman-owned businesses, we share that with the contracting group because they need to do good market research. And if we're not involved, sometimes they just do a Google search and, and, and they're gonna miss you. So you, you, need, to, you need to be sure 
and, and even if you have some friends that have all been in business and they've already registered, they need to go back and check those codes because as the federal register has changes made due to inflation and, and other legislation changes, you may be missing out on some things you're capable of doing. So it, it's good to check even if you've been there for a while. I, I, I notice a lot of businesses don't always put keywords in and, and that's important because not everybody always looks and picks the right NAICS code. Sometimes they just go by what a company says they can do. Well, thank you, Marie. That That's a lot of great information. And I'm going to guess there's some, some questions out there, you know, amongst our participants who might not understand what a PEO and an NDIA is and some of that. And so we may get some of those questions, but it also, you know, some of the resources you shared, um, we'll make sure to put all this on the website we may have to do a follow-up with you marie so we get all that data um but uh, tommy just kind of real quickly you know i know myself because of my role um the army's really taken on a serious um, um goal of working with small diverse firms can you talk to that uh, yeah just briefly the you know with the president's uh signing of the the bill uh, federal agencies, in fact, first his executive order first. Uh, federal agencies started then to include the Army to start looking at their diverse spend. And uh, when I ran the Army Small Business Office, we did not have to report that, you know, but we, we all knew, we tracked it. I mean, we could tell based on what you put in SAMS, you know, whether you were a minority or not. But today, uh, I had to answer a congressional uh, from Congress with that question, Tammy. And uh, in fact, it was the Corps of Engineers. Wanted to know how many women were getting contracts from the Corps of Engineers and then further by ethnic category. Uh, and that came from Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee out of Texas. Oh, and yeah. so so we had to do that. And, and now every federal agency now with the SBA has to report the diverse spend. So it's not gonna happen overnight. You know, we're gonna be transparent with folks, but the agencies are working in order to, because uh, they got to answer the mail and the Army, uh, and I'm still a little connected with the, the Army office, uh, they are working hard to try to figure out just how to do that. And from the Army side, that filters down to Marie and her team, because as the Army has over 250 small business professionals that try to help uh, the Army, you know, uh, as Marie says, not about goals, but meet their mission requirements with the right folks helping right. them do that and we know that the big guys of the world they don't do all that work in-house they are having to sub that work out and by right. law if you over seven hundred thousand dollars in any requirement any agency they must uh have a small business plan and i can i believe you can we can be assured that that also is going to be even more inclusive of diversity spend and uh I, i'll finish by saying this I'm now getting calls from federal agencies asking me, help me find minority businesses that are qualified that can help us with our mission requirements. That, you know, that wasn't happening a year ago. Right. So. And I'm gonna guess Bill's getting some of the same calls. Uh, yes, he is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's come back to you, Melinda. Um, just because I was talking about a lot of the exciting expansion plans for the airport. Let's talk about um, what you're going to have available as procurement opportunities that are specifically, you know, opportunities for small, especially black or diverse owned businesses. Oh, I think you're on mute. Can you hear me now? There you are. Okay. Uh, sorry, I lost uh, audio there for a minute i didn't hear your entire question i'm sorry okay yeah we're getting a little a little feedback here um so i know from some of my experience out at the airport there's some really exciting expansion plans out there and you have a lot of needs can you talk about the procurement opportunities that you have available that you know small diverse owned firms might not know they could even apply for uh sure 
we have a couple of programs out at the airport where um, we work with small businesses and disadvantaged businesses, and that can include uh, female-owned, minority-owned uh, businesses who have become certified as disadvantaged businesses uh, with the state of Michigan. We also have our SBE program for our small business enterprise. And what we do with that is we have a lot of opportunities to, if we can find enough businesses that are certified, we would like to set aside a certain percentage of contracts so that they can bid on those and their only competition will be other small businesses like themselves. And we have a lot of uh, airport work that we're gonna be doing, a lot of runway work that we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be uh, reconstructing some of the runways, but we're also gonna be building some new ones. So we're looking for small businesses or disadvantaged businesses who want to uh, have an opportunity to work on some of those projects. What we'd like to do is have uh, people learn about our certification process. And I can provide you information on that so that they can uh, take a look at it. If they feel that they can be certified as a disadvantaged or a small business, we'd really like for them to obtain that certification. Because if we have federally funded contracts uh, from the government, they require a certain percentage of disadvantaged businesses participate in our contracts. So the more we have, the better it works out for us, the better it works out for the small businesses. Now, if our contracts are not federally funded, we try to do the same thing with our small business program. So give some examples. Like I remember when I was learning about this, one of the ones that you know came to mind was landscaping. You know, what are, what are some of the areas that you're going to be looking for vendors that a small business might not expect that you're looking for? Okay, absolutely. We have, like I said, a lot of on airfield work, but we also need uh, smaller businesses uh, or smaller um, companies to work with us. For example, we have uh, janitorial services, we have uh, snow removal, and this is snow removal around the terminal, not necessarily on the airfield. So a smaller company could definitely participate in that. We also need audio, audio visual equipment, uh, office supplies, anything that you can think of that you would need to run uh, a city or a small municipality, you need at the airport. And that's in addition to our um, requirements for the concrete on the runways or, uh, you know, building small buildings out on the airfield. We do that as well, and we're looking for participation there. But we need other things, consulting services, uh, you name it. And we're certainly going to be looking for people. Okay, great. Marie, how about some examples from what TACOM um, is looking for, you know, specific examples of the type of products or, you know, uh, procurement opportunities for small business, diverse owned businesses? Yeah, the Army is a little bit different in, in some of the things for supplies in that we have uh, an Ability One or AIB type store on base and we have to procure from them. Okay, if I can prove that they don't carry those types of products, then the contracting officers are allowed to go outside of that and, and make procurements. So if you sent us a capability statement because you're doing supplies, what we would do is we would just warn you that there may be an opportunity, but generally if the uh, Ability One group cannot provide it, then we can go out on the open market. Uh, the other thing with the IT services, what I can recommend is the Army again. We have um, the uh, computer and there's an enterprise of services and hardware that we have to buy off these contracts called CHESS, C-H-E-S-S. -S. And with that said, um, people would probably want to look it up and see if they can participate when it's open and become one of those vendors in that pool. So Army's kind of restricted on some of those things. So what we would be looking for would be if there are some folks out there that do some training 
Okay, we do have a whole G1 staff that does training for the 5,000 people at the command. If you have something unique that maybe uh, they would look at and, and decide that they would want to contract with, we have that type of opportunity. Um, most of our, I would say, the, the disadvantaged and um, woman-owned businesses have been in manufacturing. Okay, so we're looking for folks that can, you know, they, they've either 3D printing or they've got some capability with different types of steel bending. We kind of went back to that. A lot of what we used to do was transferred back in the 90s to the Defense Logistics Agency, which is also located at our command. So if you come in and, and, and you don't really fit with us, the Defense Logistics Agency has uh, Carlo D'Alio. And, and we, what we do is we'll send your, your capability to him because he can search DLA, which, wow, they are, they're pretty powerful and they have a lot of different opportunities. So, so we share your data. Um, it's, it's difficult to say what comes up because of the funding. You know, when we keep going on continuing resolutions, uh, we don't always have that spend rightly available. But I would say people need to look for future, because right now I think we're going to spend probably about five billion on on more uh, the joint uh, light tactical vehicle between the Army and the Marine Corps. So people like Oshkosh are going to need a ton of subcontractors. The only problem with Oshkosh is you have to research and get into their portal. So I'd recommend that folks Google Oshkosh see what their requirements are to become a subcontractor because if you're on that list and you got what they need they will work with you otherwise they just sort of shut the door and say well you're not one of our vendors so you need to research that and get on there we have a lot of uh, subcontracting opportunities you know we have general dynamics is is at uh, their one location is at, at 17 and mound road okay and sterling heights so they have their diversity program so, you know, if you contact me, I might start sending your stuff to a person called Jeannie Shabath at GDLS because she runs their diversity program. So we have a lot of places that we can engage with. So, like I said, send the capability statements in and, and, and use our, our DODAX, you know, our, our cage codes to find those opportunities in SAM.gov because we have to publish all of those. And the other thing a person can ask for is we keep a prime list. So like we'll tell you Oshkosh, we'll tell you GDLS, we'll tell you BAE. Uh, all those large businesses have huge contracts with us. And as Mr. Marks said, they have to commit to a subcontracting plan. And, and we look at who they use and, and what are those percentages and, and they have goals that they need to meet. Okay, thank you. Um, so the final area we wanted to cover is, and you've touched on it somewhat, both of you in your comments, but you know, what is your process for businesses to apply and be considered? And I think Marie, you've talked about, you have a certified or a disadvantaged uh, business. Yeah, when uh, folks go into SAM.gov, they gotta go into SAM.gov. And the requirements are there. It's just like some of the requirements change for women-owned businesses where there are different certifications that, that they have to make before they're approved. Um, I guess I would, I would ask Melinda about the state of Michigan because that's, what, that's where they have to go for you. I don't know how different that is than uh, the uh, Small Business Administration, but uh, if, if they're registered in SAM, they have a cage code, uh, I think they're changing uh, some of the numbering systems, uh, but the cage is where they need to be and that's what they have to do in order to do business with us. Uh, there are very few uh, opportunities where we may use a credit card uh, to make a purchase. And in that case, uh, we've done it for like some legal staff or in depositions where we can go directly and, and they don't have to have a cage. They would just use the, the credit card to make the purchase. So that's some of the other things people need to look at is, do you accept a credit card purchase? You know? Okay, all right. Okay, Melinda, back to you. Yeah. Let's talk about the airport and your process for businesses 
you know, to apply to be considered. You've talked, to, you've touched on some things, but let's mm -hmm. dig a little deeper. Okay. So the airport, um, our procurement process is um, not as complicated as some, but perhaps more complicated than others. Uh, but it's pretty simple. All of our bids are out on uh, Everything that we solicit, uh, with the exception of the using the credit card that uh, Maria was just referring to. But we, um, in terms of our small businesses, we handle the certification in-house. So if you want to be a small business and you know participate in those uh, set-asides that we do for our small business, we have a portal on our website and it's called the um, Diversified Business SBE Compliance Program. You can go there, take a look at our requirements, our application. It's based on the uh, Small Business Administration size standards. That's how we determine if you're eligible. It's very simple. Uh, it takes maybe two weeks to get certified. Uh, if you, you know, provide us with all the information you need, and then you can start receiving and participating in our small business program. Uh, the disadvantaged business program, we have um, the certification process, as you may know, is only done by three agencies here in Michigan, MDOT, DDOT, and Wayne County. Wayne County handles the DBE certification for us, especially for our concessions of uh, disadvantaged businesses. But if you're certified through any of those agencies, either MDOT, DDOT, or Wayne County, you can participate in our DBE program. Um, I don't know how long it takes. I know it takes more than two weeks. So uh, we have so many contracts that are going to be coming out uh, this year that are going to have DDE requirements. Uh, so I would encourage anyone who's interested to contact one of those three agencies and get your DDE certification. Uh, we are happy to assist anyone in the way we can. Uh, to get through that process. But I know that those three agencies are really, really great about helping people uh, get the information they need. Um, and I think. Okay, thank you. Um, I want to bring back uh, Marie and Tommy, um, have them come back on camera. Because what I'd like to do now is go to our, our Q and A part of the program um, and bring in my colleague Devin O'Reilly. I see Devin. I see we've got quite a few questions in the chat box. Yes, yes, we do, Tammy. Um, so first of all, I think um, what might help a little bit is because we've had attendees, you know, coming on late, and we've got you know almost a hundred people on. Um, so it might help, I think, to just back up. We have some questions about where. Uh, various individuals are from, what organizations they represent. So if we could go around one more time and just kind of reintroduce kind of what organization you represent so people have an understanding of that. Okay, I'll, I'll start. Uh, Tommy Marks, I'm the director of the Virginia Minority Business Development Agency's uh, Business Center located in Alexander, Virginia. My colleague, Bill Grice, runs the Detroit Minority Business Development Agency Center there in Detroit. And I put his information in the chat. Uh, we, we are business consultation offices that help minority businesses uh, through their, uh, to grow and scale their businesses. Uh, and we work, we work in collaboration with the federal agencies, local authorities like the airport authorities and the state uh, and county uh, uh, offices. Great, and thanks, and thanks, Tommy, for putting that uh, information in the chat because we also have questions about how to how to reach uh, each of you. And so that's another question I'll ask is when you kind of reintroduce yourself, just either um, you know let let the audience know what's the best way to reach you or your agency, or you can also put that information in the chat as well. Right. So if I could, so for me, uh, you go to my website. Uh, actually, the simplest way you can go to mbda.gov is the commerce website in every under uh, center business centers 
and every business center is located across the United States. And we're, our website's a link to that. Great, thank you. Uh, Marie, okay. do you wanna go next? Yes, my name is Marie Gapinski and I'm the Assistant Director of the Office of Small Business Programs for the Army. And we're located at the uh, Detroit Arsenal, which was formerly TACOM Tank Automotive and Armaments Command in Warren, Michigan. And um, I have some handouts that will be posted and there will be links there to get us. So uh, I, I had asked the audience if you came in late that I'd like you to send me your capability statement and a short little uh, uh, note on, on the type of uh, work you have done, what your past performance has been. And um, I can type my uh, email again in the chat if you would like. Great, thank you. And Melinda? Okay, um, my name is Melinda Westbrook. I'm the Deputy Director of Sli uh, Supplier Diversity at the Wayne County Airport Authority. And uh, what I mentioned early on is that we have a couple of programs out at the airport for small and disadvantaged businesses. And we're looking for people to get certified either as a small business or a disadvantaged business. Or if you're a large business and you can do work with the airport, we'd be interested in having you as a prime as well. Um, we have um, a number of ways for you to access the information and I'll be happy to provide the chamber with a list of uh, emails and contact numbers so that you can get in touch with us. Uh, I'm in the process now of trying to get some folks pre-qualified for all of the uh, contracts that we have coming up. So I'll provide the uh, email, phone number, uh, so that you can get additional information about the program. Great, thank you. Um, and it also uh, is important to mention that we are recording this webinar, and so it will be posted on our uh, Chamber website. So you will be able to view this after this. I know some people had mentioned they're trying to jot down information as they're listening, um, and that can be difficult. So this will be posted, this is recorded. Um, you'll be able to go back and, uh, and jot down anything and get any information that you missed uh, maybe the first time around. Um, so uh, a question, um, let's see. Are there any opportunities to bid on marketing, consulting, uh, DEI projects within your organization, and that can be for anybody. Well, I can speak on that. We do, uh, at the airport authority, uh, the majority of our uh, requirements are bid. Uh, so we do bid out, uh, we don't do a lot of marketing, but we do have some things that uh, require uh, marketing in our external affairs department so those things when the requirements come up they are bid out and they're put out on uh, the mitten website which uh, i don't know if folks are familiar with that but there are a number of entities not just the airport authority who post bids on that site great thank you yeah we wouldn't have as many but they would be posted in sam.gov if there was a request All right, well, we'll move on to the next question. So we have a, a, a business owner from uh, Sweet Potato Delights, um, and they recently received the SBE certification last year. Um, are there any advisors available to help guide through next steps at any of your organizations? Um, anyone to kind of help with kind of feedback or guidance on the next steps once they've been SBE certified? That's the SBA, they actually have individuals that work with finances, that work with your marketing, that work with plans. So they would need to see who in there, if they're in the Detroit area, uh, who in the Detroit office would be available for uh, counsel. Sure, good, yes. Good answer, your local SBA, which we, you know, we do have, you know, in Detroit, we have a local office here downtown. Um, mm -hmm. So that would be the best, that would be the best route. Um, we have another question I, I'm interested in. <laughs> The, the answer on this, but um, someone had asked, are, is anyone working with um, medical cannabis businesses? Is that uh, 
a type of business that is in your realm at all or that that's you a, that's a big no no for us as a federal as a federal agency and a federal right. federal property we've got big signs make sure you don't have anything left in your car <laughs> and i the same for the airport authority okay so yes we're not 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 there yet with the the medical uh the medical cannabis um there are a lot of opportunities for that now but uh, unfortunately this is not one one yet um another question we have is uh what percentage of contracts uh will be set aside does the airport invest in uh job training um or retooling uh skills that's so kind of two separate questions it sounds like yeah I'm, I'm not sure what you mean by uh, job training, if you're talking about job training for our employees or outside vendors, but um, one of the things that we do with our small businesses uh, when we have a set aside, every time a requisition goes into our system, we review how many small businesses we might have out there who are able to offer those products or services to determine if it's something that we want to uh, set aside just for a small business. We have a authority-wide uh, percentage of 20% right now that we would like to see be awarded to small businesses. Uh, but whenever possible, we'd like to exceed that 20%. Okay, great. As far as the second half of that question, I'm not sure I can yeah, I guess I, I guess we'll take it as you know, uh, as opportunities is through for employees. Do you have do you offer any kind of training or upskilling for employees? Yeah, for employees, I don't know if I can answer that. I need HR for that. Uh, but I can say for myself personally, uh, we have um, a lot of training that we're offered. Uh, you know, it's not something that uh, we have to wait for someone to sign us up for there are many opportunities where you can go out and this is work related as well as you know just personal uh, development okay thanks um we have a, oh sorry, was there another i was just going to say for us at take uh, a lot of us are certified in our fields and we have the defense acquisition university that they provide the courses that we need and we have structured programs to advance leadership and, and the whatnot. The only thing that we have locally would be what we call our, our G1 staff, which is our training staff. And that would be some of the things I had mentioned earlier that maybe you had some self-improvement type courses or something like that. If they're talking about their company and they need some training, again, the SBA, and then I would say Pure Michigan, you guys have some programs and things that you do for local businesses. So I, I would think that each state has something similar and, and that's what they would need to look into. Yeah, great, great point. And we'll, I think we'll, we'll hear a little bit more about that later uh, at the end of the presentation here. So this next question is for, uh, for Tommy. Uh, does the Army uh, seek or have workforce opportunities available? So maybe this isn't something directly in your wheelhouse, um, but is there, are there opportunities, uh, workforce opportunities available with your organization? And if so, how might uh, someone look for such opportunities? So if we're talking the true definition of workforce opportunities, I, I would say the answer to that is no. Because uh, the, the, uh, that's more down, to, I believe, at the state levels where you talk about workforce opportunities. But contracting opportunities based on mission requirements, as Marie talked about earlier, uh, and Melinda, across the board, whatever portfolio that you're in, uh, the, these agencies actually have that need. Uh, you know, so from uh, administrative staffing, right, to, uh, in Marie's case, in the building, <laughs> you know, building vehicles. So um, what you really have to do is, based on your company's mission itself, uh, do the research to find out uh, where you'd like to be. And, and, and one of the answers to how do you get there is uh, individuals like Marie and Melinda, I mean, they are the representatives of their agencies actually to try to find those resources, those those companies that can help them with those mission requirements. Uh, they don't have, I used to say uh, when, when I was on the track, uh, 
the mission and the money, you got to understand where the mission and the money is. The mission and the money is not with Melinda and Marie. Uh, we're just that point of the spirit to help find the, the right company that can go to that program manager and help them with their mission requirements. Uh, we have another question. Um, actually, let's see, this could be, well, when we, we were not selected for a bid, how can we or can we uh, get any feedback? Is there a mechanism for that? There, it depends on the type of solicitation. There's clauses in there for debriefing. So, uh, you know, it depends how much it is, and they have to look at the clauses in the solicitation. Okay. Um, generally, uh, if it's lower dollar value, uh, it's a no. But you can work with your procurement technical assistance group at PTAC. I know here for us in, in Macomb County, they're really good, and, and they kind of help people go over that. I'm not supposed to do that. I'm not supposed to be an agent. I'm just an advocate. But the PTAC has the ability to go through that and help them with that. And I can certainly say for the airport authority, uh, we do provide debriefing and our procurement staff uh, makes themselves available to discuss with, excuse me, to discuss with you just exactly uh, perhaps what you did wrong or if you forgot certain uh, forms and things like that, they will go through the process with you uh, to let you know how you can submit a better bid the next time. Uh, I don't do that in my area, but procurement is definitely uh, available. Got it. Thanks. Uh, so, Marie, this one may also be for you. As it pertains to TACOM um, and the Army, is there specific guidelines for a, procure, for a procurement officer to utilize the GSA contracts for procurement of goods and services? Oh, yeah. Right, right now, that's that's the big thing about um, where we're looking at, at how we're grouping and, and utilizing these larger contracts, which they're referring to the GSA contracts. The problem with those contracts in small businesses, regardless if you're disadvantaged or not, is the fact that annually you still have to show you're, you're, you're doing at least $25,000 of work. So a lot of people get on the schedule, work hard to get there, but they can't keep it. You know, so, so you really have to look at the work you're going after. You know, does it truly have enough in it? to keep you going that you're hitting that mark of the 25,000 every year. You know, uh, uh, I, 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 think, I think the best thing to do if you're new, uh, unless you have something that's gonna have a lot of commercial purchases, uh, GSA, you know, everybody says, oh, it's great to have GSA. Yeah, but you gotta be able to keep it. You know, I don't know, Mr. Marks, if there's more you wanna add to that, but, but that's the biggest thing. GSA is great, but if you invented something that can go commercial, yippee, because that way you're you're going to have all kinds of sales. You know, you know, I'll I'll leave it up to you, Mr. Marks, if you want to add. No, no, Marie. Actually, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, it is a great vehicle, but you know, like with with all resources, it's got to be able to fit you know your business profile and what you're going to do. Because if you can't, GSA will give you. Uh, uh, They'll give you a buy on the first year. Let's say you don't make that twenty five thousand. But if you don't make it in that second year, they, they start they now start processing you off of the schedule. And after all that work that you did to get it, uh, you know, so some of the things it, it's a from a business strategy, you got a schedule. Uh, don't try to do don't try to go it alone. The first, listen, the federal government did six hundred billion dollars last year. OK. And we know they weren't closed, hadn't closed even during COVID. And in fact, that was even more money than we had done before COVID. So uh, a key to success is find teaming partners. I mean, you have a schedule. Tommy Marks doesn't. Right. And so the, together you can you can go together and get that work because you got the vehicle that Marie needs, which their contract officers will, will jump at. But you don't have the, all the capacity to do it so find somebody to work with you and you know share share that share that uh you know, uh, you know that opportunity because you know zero is zero right i mean so it's better to have half than have zero great answer 
The other uh, thing that I would suggest is SBA, what is it, every first Wednesday of the month have different webinars. And and that would probably be a good avenue too to see what the small business and organizations are doing. Um, so we had another question, uh, Tommy, for you. Um, from the standpoint um, of administrative staffing, uh, are there specific security clearances needed for positions? Uh, the answer to that is yes, but the solicitation would tell you whether or not uh, you know clearances are required. Uh, but not every every requirement that supports the organizations uh, need a secret clearance. And sometimes it's a fallacy that if you're going to do work with the federal government, especially a, a DOD, then you got to have a, a secret clearance. Uh, that's not necessarily the case. So, but the solicitation will actually spell that out. You got to at least have public trust, be able to pass public trust. But there are a number there, there are a number of requirements uh, on that uh, adds up to billions of dollars that don't require a individual clearance or a facility clearance. Thank you. Um, we have another kind of uh, industry specific. Uh, someone asked, "What about commercial cleaning and disinfecting services? Are there are there opportunities with the, with your organizations uh, in commercial cleaning and disinfecting services?" Okay, this is Marie again. That would be posted on Sam.gov. Okay, because it's got to be fair and open to all. And uh, just so you know, uh, I am a tenant. Okay, before when we said take on my general ran it all. Oh no, we belong to the Arsenal group. Okay, so the Arsenal is ran by the Detroit Arsenal, but they use our um, DTA uh, Army Contracting Center. Uh, to do that requirement, but you'd see it posted. And I would say the same thing for the airport. Any type of service like that, we will um, put a bid out for the public. Okay, yeah. There's there's several questions about the types of organization and there are types of companies uh, that you'd work with, but you know that's all. As you said, you know you can you can find all that information um, online. Um, let's see, we have a question. Uh, can you be SBE if you have a DBE certification? Is the process the same? Well, I can speak for the airport. The process is not the same. Uh, the application for the SBE certification is done uh, by my office at the airport where the DBE certification was done by those three agencies in the state of Michigan, uh, DDOT, MDOT, and Wayne County. However, if you have a DBE certification, uh, it's a lot quicker for you to be certified as an SBE because we have reciprocity uh, with those agencies for the certification. So it can go quicker, but um, the DBE certification takes a bit longer. Answer. Um, we also had a question. Um, you know, is there any particular opportunities or uh, attention given to um, small uh, small businesses that are uh, veteran owned or uh, disability uh, persons with disabilities focused or owned? Is there any? Yes, there are programs. In fact, uh, let's see. Where is my new goal? Yeah, I have to have at least for service disabled 0.53 of our awards. So if we spend six million dollars, 0.53 we're supposed to be trying to achieve with service disabled veteran and small businesses. And you can you can span many categories. You know that that's one of the things you could be a you could be a woman owned service disabled minority business. You know, we we like those because we hit all the categories. Located in a hub zone. And a hub zone. Well, underutilized <laughs> business. So. Yes. Okay. Well, I know we've got. Uh, I don't know if uh, Belinda Anderson is on. Uh, is, is still on. Um, but uh, Miss Anderson, the owner of the uh, the sweet potato, uh, the sweet potato delights, definitely uh, wants to get in touch uh, with Melinda. About opportunities, um, they've been SBE certified, and they want to follow up. Um, Concessionaire, vegan, yeah, vegan sweet potato. Oh, good. Uh, 
goods. So that's something to look out for there. Well, I'll certainly make sure that I leave uh, contact information with the chamber so they can post. Great. And then one more time, because I know we've got, we had, we have several questions here about, you know, this type of, this type of company, you know, insurance agencies, LED lighting. Um, again, one final time, where can individuals or organizations go uh, to find out if there's opportunities in their particular, uh, particular field or sector? And back up. And it would be meant for the airport authority. Uh, all of our solicitations are posted there. All right. Great. Well, uh, thank you so much. Uh, we got through uh, a lot of questions. Um, and as I mentioned, we're also going to be uh, posting uh, this recording complete with the Q&A uh, in, in its entirety on our website. So you'll be able to uh, to reference that for questions on what websites to go to, um, you know, what general contact information for all of our uh, for all of our panelists and all the information here today, because I know you know we put out a lot of information, we threw out a lot of websites. Um, so we'll make sure that if you attended this uh, attended this webinar, then you'll be able to find that information and access that through our website. Um, so thank you to the panelists for this uh, for for participating in the Q and A. Um, and now I want to bring back uh, Tammy to take us through our next portion of the event. Thanks so much, Devin, and, and for all of our panelists, thank you so much. There was a lot of questions there in the box, and a lot of it is uh, pertaining to how to get in touch with you and how to find you and learn more about what you spoke about today. So uh, we're definitely going to have to follow up with you to make sure that we get some uh, really good information from you to post, um, especially you, Marie. I know there's going to be a lot of questions on uh, some of the acronyms you used and, and what that means, you know, and I'm close to that only because I, I know the Army, but um, thank you. And we're gonna be looking for, to you for some other follow-up information to put on our website. So, um, Devin, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much for uh, handling the Q&A. Uh, Devin gets to deal with a lot of our small businesses and um, he enjoys doing that, and so being able to work with you is, is really helpful uh, for him to, to continue to learn about how, you know, we can continue to support you. Um, and so um, next up, I want to bring up, um, I had mentioned earlier in uh, my discussions about our great relationship that we have with Pure Michigan Business Connect, which is a part of the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. And so I'd like to introduce Tanya Marcos-Fano um, from Pure Michigan Business Connect. And she's gonna share some information on some upcoming procurement programs that are a little different than what we did today, much more specific, um, can help you prepare for pitching to a company, but then also give you some opportunities to possibly be matched up with a company. Um, so Tanya, thanks so much for joining us today. Good morning and thank you. Uh, I just wanna say thank you all to the attendees who joined us this morning for this access to procurement webinar. I'm confident that you all heard some great points of view and connected the dots and some new opportunities. So as Tammy mentioned, uh, my name is Tanya Marcos Bano. I'm the Development and Operations Manager for PMBC. So I personally work to help identify new uh, buyers or demand to facilitate connections with Michigan suppliers. I work closely with our diversity partners, such as the Michigan Minority Supplier Development Council, uh, the Great Lakes Women Business Council, National Veterans Business Development Council, the National Business League and Michigan Hispanic and Asian Pacific Chambers of Commerce. So we use those partners to help us identify diverse suppliers. Uh, and, and for those of you that do not know, PMBC is demand-driven public-private initiative that was created by the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. Uh, and we look to connect local and global purchasers to Michigan suppliers in all industries. So PMBC uh, aims to uncover procurement and innovative gaps by working with local and regional partners 
to identify the suppliers to fill those needs. And our team facilitates introductions to suppliers through the data-driven matchmaking events, buyer tours, pitch competitions, and other supplier immersion initiatives. So we can't do that without excellent and dedicated partners like the Detroit Regional Chamber. Uh, they have committed to increasing goods and services spent with Michigan-based suppliers. So for 2022, PMBC has, <clears throat> excuse me, a packed calendar of matchmaking opportunities, uh, one of which was already kind of mentioned today, the MDEX. Um, it's likely the most relevant to this group. Uh, so we're doing that in partnership with the Michigan Defense Center. It's going to be hosted in person April 20th and 21st. We are still in the process of collecting buyer needs uh, and suspect the supplier application should open in early February. A couple of other events, uh, we've got our DTE Renewable Energy Matchmaker that's going to be hosted on March 17th. That supplier application is open now. Uh, we also are going to be working with Consumers Energy for a Meet the Buyer event that's going to be March 23rd. Uh, a couple of others uh, include our, our Healthcare Summit on April 14th. Uh, we have a Medi uh, Meet the Medico Buyer which will take place on April 25th. Uh, and finally, uh, in uh, May 12th, we will be working with Tri-State PTAX uh, to bring a matchmaker that's going to be virtual on May 12th. So we're, we're still working on collecting the needs uh, for all the buyers. Sometimes it's kind of like herding cats, but we make it happen and these opportunities open and uh, we notify through our partner organizations who I, I mentioned early on, on how to get access to that. But if you do visit uh, pmbc.connect.space, uh, you can see all of the events that I've, I've mentioned uh, and then what the timeline is associated with each of those events. So I do appreciate you allowing me a couple minutes to kind of talk about that. I'm happy to answer any questions in a follow-up, um, but the best way to find out about our opportunities are through those organizations or on our website. Uh, thank you, Tanya. Um, and because I'm I'm close to this, obviously, I, I know about your programming, but maybe just for those who aren't, kind of walk us through. So I think the next procurement forum is coming up April, maybe, or maybe sooner. I'm trying to remember. But walk through what will happen with that they'll they'll register to attend the, they'll have the the webinar up, up front um and then the match make can you kind of go through it for our folks sure so each of our events are, are a little bit different right so the uh, maybe the one that you're talking about is our mdex so that one is in partnership with uh, the michigan defense center so that includes two days of programming but for for pmbc so what we do is work with our partners to identify uh, buyers who then use our, our connect space system to upload their their purchasing needs once that has completed then what we do is notify our Michigan supply base that the, this opportunity is available the supplier application is open so uh, suppliers need to have an account which we've got I think when we looked yesterday I've got like 48,000 uh, potential suppliers that are currently in our system and of course we're always looking for more and we're always looking to diversify that so super easy to set up an account on connect space and you'll get notified of these procurement needs or I'm sorry procurement opportunities <clears throat> so we'll send out notification letting people know that the supplier application is open and kind of to your point so there are two separate ways to engage in our event so registering to attend the event is very different than applying to meet with buyers so it is important that you do complete the supplier application if you want to be considered to meet with these buyers. We don't do any vetting. Um, once the supplier application closes and, and we, we have a timeline that's usually on the landing page, the so suppliers will know exactly when the supplier application closes. We then send that final list to each of the buyers who then scrub the list and determine who they're going to meet with. Unfortunately, we are limited on the amount of suppliers that can meet with buyers and, and we notify them up front how many that's going to be. So the buyers then select what suppliers they want to meet with and then we notify each of the suppliers whether or not they were selected. That's a typical process uh, when it comes to our procurement needs. Oh, sorry. No, I, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's fabulous that uh, I think you could probably go on some further. 
as it's during COVID, this we have all become very used to animals, small children, <laughs> partners walking around behind us or whatever, and we're used to it. And by the way, beautiful cat. Thanks, thanks. She's usually very quiet until this, so she gets her opportunity to get on screen, I guess. Yeah. Um, so in addition to Michigan companies, I think, you know, you should also mention because of the success of Pure Michigan Business Connect, you also deal with international companies looking for suppliers from Michigan. Yeah, we do. So we work with, uh, so we're demand based, so we don't activate until a buyer approaches us. So we don't care where the buyers come from. So, you know, we've got, um, we're actually, we've got a pretty solid relationship with the folks from Boeing. So we are actually going out. Uh, and have a pavilion in Seattle for the Aerospace and Defense Supplier Summit. So that is also an opportunity for Michigan suppliers who are in the defense and aerospace industry. So we'll have a pavilion with 10 or more Michigan suppliers uh, and giving them the opportunity to, to meet with folks from Boeing. Uh, we do have international companies from Germany who, who will bring in and do uh, what we call buyer supplier tours. So they'll call us They'll say, hey, we, we've got this supply chain gap that we're looking to uh, identify Michigan suppliers for. Our research team will do some, some research, identify you know, anywhere from three to seven suppliers, and then we take that buyer on tours to meet with those suppliers. So yeah, to your point, we do work internationally as well. But the yeah. main goal is to promote uh, the Michigan supply base. So supplier right. opportunities right. are only for the Michigan suppliers, except when in one case, so that tri-state event we're, we're talking about, so that's going to be Ohio, Indiana, and Michigan. So that is the one exception uh, that we have when it comes to uh, promoting the Michigan suppliers. What has your, been your experience? So, you know, the Chamber's had a pretty aggressive um, racial justice and economic equity um, initiative underway for about a year and a half, and in, in there included is an internal examination of ourselves and one of the areas is procurement and percentage of diversity spend. Um, what are you finding across the companies in Michigan? Are there strong um, strong areas of uh, commitment to increasing diversity of spend? And then are they able to be able to fulfill it? Are they finding the suppliers? Uh, yes, I would say absolutely. So we have had um, several supplier diversity teams approach us about conducting matchmakers around supplier diversity specifically. Um, so there, there's two ways that we do that. So most, so we do not, unless asked, we don't, I, so we'll identify, we'll allow suppliers to self-identify as to whether or not they're a diverse business. And that, for us, diversity means, you know, minority, women, um, uh, veteran, service disabled veteran, and uh, LGBT. So we are moving also to accept tribal as well as um, um, disabled. So those are all I, what we identify, allow the suppliers to self-identify. But in some cases, uh, Michigan buyers are looking to determine whether or not they're certified. So we work with the certifying bodies to confirm whether or not they are certified businesses. But to that to that point, we did have an event back um, it was a couple of months ago with Ford and their supplier diversity team, and they were looking specifically to identify diverse suppliers for I think they ended up submitting around 50 procurement opportunities. Uh, so so yes, we are we are seeing that, and we have the ability to identify those suppliers for sure. Yeah, and that's, I, I, that's really where our partners come into play, right? So all those partners I mentioned up at the top, those those partners are are key to our success to make sure that we right, are right. able to identify those suppliers. Right. Yeah, I think that um, you know, this is a very important topic right now as we talk about equity and 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 growing our economy going forward and helping you know the businesses that one might not have made it through COVID but also some of the more disadvantaged firms who don't get the opportunity, don't know how to find it. We have these large companies who are now committing to a, you know, a diversity of spend, and we need to make sure that they have that. So, you know, what Pure Michigan Business Connect is doing is great. Um, and I think what would be great is if you would repeat one more time, tell our audience 
um, if they want to be um, included in your database to understand when there's opportunities coming forward, how to do that. Sure. So best way to do that is on our website, our landing page, which is pmbc.connect.space. Uh, and that will list uh, all the events that we have coming up, but it'll also give you the ability to get signed up as a supplier on our portal. So it's really important that you do that so that when we are conducting these research opportunities, your name and company, along with all your capabilities, uh, show up there. So uh, definitely the best way to stay in touch. Of course, you can find me on LinkedIn and ask any questions that you might have, but I'm happy to, to provide any guidance. But if you aren't uh, affiliated with any of those diverse organizations that I mentioned, I, I highly recommend that you do because they also provide lots of opportunities to help you scale, uh, provide education and resources, so all great great organizations to help you do that along of course with the Detroit Regional Chamber. Uh, thanks Tanya, I really appreciate that. The, the Detroit Chamber really values our partnership with uh, PMBC as well as you know MEDC. We've so many acronyms out there today um, but Peer Business Michigan or Peer Business Michigan Connect and the Michigan Economic Development Corporation your you're wonderful partners, you're doing great work, and, and thank you for joining us today to share more. I think this was probably you know, a webinar where everyone was struggling to keep up with it all and catch all the names and the emails and everything. So um, to all of you out there who are participating, we're gonna capture as much of all of this we can um, and post it on our website, uh, which I mentioned at the beginning, but let me say it again, detroitchamber.com backslash equity um, and then as much resource uh, materials and information that our panel provides us also we'll make sure to post there um, so again once again thank you tanya for sharing this valuable information and please thank the rest of the team back at pure michigan business connect you're you're just great partners um, i want to thank our panel uh, for their insights and wonderful conversation i know for you who are watching today there's probably a lot to take in i I checked out the chat box and the, or the question box and I saw some of the questions. So we're gonna look at your questions and make sure we capture all of that and some information and post it uh, to the website so that you can get that as well as contacting you know, our panelists too. We're just wonderful. So you know, a special thank you to uh, Tommy and Marie and Melinda, you're wonderful. Uh, to my colleague, Devin, thanks so much for helping uh, with the questions. Um, I have to say again, thank you to Blue Cross Blue Shield for sponsoring today's event and uh, for helping us to continue our diverse and black owned business series. And so to all of you out there that joined us today, I hope this helpful was program, or this program was really helpful to you. Um, and we always love your ideas for other part, our programs that you might like to hear from us on. Um, so with that, I wish you all a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Tim.